Kelsey Zeiser, Senior Editor at Light Reading, and we're here at MEF 19 in Los Angeles. I'm joined by Ralph Santatoro with Fujitsu Network Communications. Good to see you, Ralph. Hey, good to see you, Kelsey. Um, so there's been a lot of conversation this week about the standards that uh, MEF announced for SD-WAN back in August. Uh, what are your thoughts on how standards will drive market adoption for SD-WAN? Yes, yeah, so yeah, so I think the, just to set the baseline for the standard that we, we rolled out in August, mm -hmm. uh, it's called MEF 70, and, and it really sets the baseline of what an SD-WAN service is. And uh, at Fujitsu, we're, we're a managed service provider delivering SD-WAN services, and the issues that I always have with customers, you know, when you engage them, everybody had a different meaning for SD-WAN, and so it was really hard to, it took, it took quite a while to get on the same page of, okay, this is an SD-WAN, and then you can move forward with your transactions. So the MEF 70 standard setting the baseline that an SD-WAN is an over-the-top service, it can run over anybody's underlay uh, service, uh, any, from any service provider anywhere in the world, and getting a bunch of those key characteristics defined uh, in uh, MEF 70 was was phenomenal. I mean, it's, I, I see it helping me right now. I can point people right to the standard and say, you know, that's what we're compliant with to move forward. Right. So, I, yeah, so I think that's that's a great first step. Yeah, yeah. So clarifying a lot of that terminology. Absolutely. And everyone on the same page. Yeah, and also what makes up an SD-WAN service? What are all the pieces that makes it up? What goes on mm -hmm. a customer prem? Uh, what are all, what's the names of them? So you're actually talking the same language. And, uh, and, and what's an architecture look like? You know, can it be in the cloud? Does it have to be on-prem, et cetera? So, yeah. Definitely helpful for enterprises in determining yeah. uh, what their, what their yeah. needs are and if that service meets it. Uh, we've also been talking a lot about security this week. Mm -hmm. um, how important is um, security in your conversation with your customers um, when you're discussing SD-WAN? Yeah, I, I think um, if you look at I mean, security, cybersecurity in, in general, or network security, information security is on everyone's minds right now, right? And we live in this environment now where you, everything has to be zero trust, meaning that I don't trust anything. So I need to make sure I have all the mechanisms in place to, to facilitate that. So I don't want, I want to make sure any network is, is not trusted. I have the encryption and things like that. So, so I think SD-WAN is, is the, one of the first types of uh, networking services where, in, where in, all the traffic is typically encrypted. And now obviously SD-WAN can go over the internet, so you would obviously encrypt it because it's a public network, but even our customers encrypt it over the private network, over the carrier ethernet or the MPLS network, because they want cons that consistency and, and really they don't want the traffic being snooped or, or diverted, et cetera. So encryption is one big piece, and then the other big piece is you know, having firewalls and capability because when you connect to the internet, you, know, you need to block bad things from right. coming out. And I think the third area with, um, uh, with that is also having policies to set for, uh, because SD-WAN is managed centrally, uh, you, you set your security policy centrally. So like in, in uh, a traditional enterprise network where you put security appliances all around the network, mm -hmm. you had to go in and touch each product and configure it and, and go in there and set the security uh, capabilities. That's very uh, error prone, where now I can set them in one place, okay. push them down everywhere, mm -hmm. and it's a uniform set of policies. Okay. Sounds like that really yeah. simplifies it then. Absolutely, well, and, and that's uh, with security, it's all, a lot of it is just human error, things misconfigured, ports left open. Right. So yeah, being able to do that centrally is a big is a big Automating help. Automating it a Absolutely. little bit more as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've also heard the term co-managed approach to SD-WAN a lot this week as well. Um, what are some of the benefits of co-managed versus the DIY approach? And are mm -hmm. you seeing uh, more momentum towards managed or co-managed? Yeah, so there was a, a, a really good panel session the other day about, you know, there's, there's this continuum of DIY, mm -hmm and there's fully managed, and then co-managed, uh, I, I can't remember which speaker said it, but it was really anything in between. And so DIY, what we're finding, so, so what I do at, at Fujitsu is we have an SD-WAN, a fully managed service, and we, I have a professional services practice where we'll actually help customers if they do a DIY and run into trouble. And, and so there's been a lot of talk about SD-WAN where it's kind of like self, you, you can do everything yourself, it's a lot easier. Now I agree, it's a lot easier than the maybe more traditional ways of doing networking, but we find a lot of customers that start off that way, they say, look, I'm, I'm kind of stuck here, can you help us out? And that's where our professional services team will come in and, and bring them up, and then in some cases, those customers are like, okay, now that it's up and running, 
um, I, they thought that was the hard part, but now I have to support it. So if uh, I have to upgrade software or a device fails, I have to replace it. That's that person that has to, that's going to get a call at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> right? And so that's, yeah. and then they're like, maybe we should do, go to a managed service. So, so that's kind of your fully managed and then your DIY. And then the co-managed, so um, is, is a tricky proposition because there's some things you might want to allow your, your subscriber to make changes to. Mm -hmm but you don't want to allow them to make changes to things that can bring down the network. Right. And if you're, if you're offering a co-managed service and you're the service provider with the SLA and they take down the network, you're responsible at the end of the day for that, right? right. So, so that's a real tricky, so you just have to determine what, what they can do that they won't hurt themselves, right? So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't break it. Yeah, don't break it, right, because we have to fix it, so right. we don't want you to break it. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, do you have any market predictions for next year that you'd like to share? Is there anything that um, that for the industry at large can do to further adoption for SD-WAN? Yeah, I think one of the things that, that we're seeing is, so we, we rolled out our SD-WAN managed service uh, uh, about two years ago, but what we're finding is SD-WAN is one piece, especially for branch offices or retail locations like um, you know, like restaurants and or, or like uh, Starbucks coffee shops where you have lots of cookie cutter type of approach of of uh, many, or, uh, many like a Starbucks, a great example. All the stores are kind of set up the right. same with the same equipment. So we have a service called SD Branch as a service, and what we're what it does is it starts off with SD WAN, and then all the peripheral things around it. So you have your Wi-Fi access point, you have your LTE modem, you might have a router, you have an Ethernet switch, maybe you have a, um, a security appliance. So what what we're finding is, especially in those retail environments where it's cookie cutter, is they want someone to manage more and more of the enterprise uh, of those uh, branch or retail locations. And, and so offering that, we offer that as a fully managed service, so then they can roll them out very quickly okay. because those small group, those small organizations don't have IT staff, obviously. They're, you're not going to find an IT person in a Starbucks, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> or maybe they would be actually one of the customers, right? <laughs> right. A very well Having a latte. <laughs> there you go. Well, exactly, right. yeah, yeah. Well, thanks so much, Ralph. It's That's been great. a pleasure. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Kelsey.